Neither the word decentralized nor the word decentralization appears even once in the Bitcoin white paper. That fact should be remarkable to anyone who has spent time in the broader cryptocurrency community. Decentralization, decentralization, decentralization is the mantra. It is the magic word that somehow imbues moral righteousness to a project or decision. For the Bitcoin faithful, anything done in the name of decentralization is virtuous. Anything that might result in greater centralization is evil and should be avoided at all costs. But what do these terms mean and why, if they are so important, does Satoshi not mention them a single time in the foundational text of Bitcoin? If we search the white paper for the root word central, which ostensibly would return all of the variants, we come up with two telling results. In both cases, the term being used is central authority. The term is used once in the incentive section to explain how the coins given to a miner who finds a new block provides a way to initially distribute coins into circulation since there is no central authority to issue them. The term is used again by Satoshi in the transactions section in discussing a common solution to the double spend problem used in systems before Bitcoin, Satoshi writes, a common solution is to introduce a trusted central authority or mint that checks every transaction for double spending. After each transaction, the coin must be returned to the mint to issue a new coin, and only coins issued directly from the mint are trusted not to be double spent. The problem with this solution is that the fate of the entire money system depends on the company running the mint, with every transaction having to go through them, just like a bank. Bitcoin, Satoshi makes clear, is a system that has no central authority for the issuance of coins or the validation of transactions. Bitcoin is decentralized in the only way that matters. Bitcoin is devoid of a central authority by design. Does the number of individuals running nodes or in control of hash add a central authority to Bitcoin? Was Bitcoin somehow centralized when, during the first blocks, it was only being mined by Satoshi himself? Was Satoshi somehow a central authority with the sole power to issue coins and validate transactions? Hal Finney began mining on block 78. Thousands of others mined in the ensuing years. On every major Bitcoin network, anyone with compatible software can participate in the network. As we have seen several times, there is also no way to prevent individuals from altering the software and mining a fork of the original chain. That was as true on day one, at block one, as it is now, a decade later. Decentralization, more often than not in Bitcoin culture, is presented as a spectrum where one network is said to be more or less centralized than the other. In the context of Bitcoin, however, centralization and decentralization are not two ends of a spectrum where each network is placed at some point on a line. In Bitcoin, centralization and decentralization is a binary. Is there a central authority? Yes, then the network is centralized. No, then the network is decentralized. A network with a central authority for the issuance of value or the validation of transactions is not a Bitcoin network. A Bitcoin network is decentralized by its very nature. Perhaps the vast majority of hash is controlled by a single entity. This was indeed the case on the day that Bitcoin was born. That doesn't make the network somehow more centralized, so long as nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. Then, there is no central authority, and the network is decentralized. Perhaps some miner with significant hash decides to create a scheme whereby only certain nodes, those which have been pre-approved, can join. Any nodes that don't like this arrangement can express their acceptance of valid blocks by working on extending them, and reject invalid blocks by refusing to work on them, in which case there is no central authority and 
the network is decentralized. The brilliance of Bitcoin is that so long as its most basic rules are followed, a central authority cannot gain control of Bitcoin. Bitcoin cannot be centralized. But, you ask, what if some bad actor gets the majority of hash on a network? What then? Bitcoin is secured by incentives. Satoshi writes in the incentives section of the white paper, if a greedy attacker is able to assemble more CPU power than all the honest nodes, he would have to choose between using it to defraud people by stealing back his payments or using it to generate new coins. He ought to find it more profitable to play by the rules, such rules that favor him with more new coins than everyone else combined than to undermine the system and the validity of his own wealth. It is because Bitcoin is decentralized by nature that such an incentive can exist. In a system with a central authority, corruption is guaranteed. It is always in the best interest of a central authority to bend the rules in unethical and immoral ways. A network participant in Bitcoin with a majority of hash can certainly bend the rules, but in doing so, he will gain less than if he had simply played by the rules. The larger the network becomes, and the more value is gained by finding each new block, the stronger the incentive becomes to play by the rules. That a single entity has a dominant position in a given market does not automatically make that entity the central authority of that market. So long as new entrants can freely compete, the market is free and the system is decentralized. The economy that is being built on top of Bitcoin will have leaders. The most competent market participants will gain dominant positions, but they will only retain those positions as long as they maintain superior competence relative to other market participants. The economy built on top of Bitcoin, with its particular rules and incentives, will always remain permissionless and, therefore, decentralized by its very nature.